Hello there, welcome along to LFC TV's Premier League review show here on YouTube. Now, if you are enjoying the content, then do make sure to subscribe for even more of us. We are reflecting on that game at Anfield against Man City, and it was some game, wasn't it, Mel's? Lots of standout individual performances. Fair to say, Luis Diaz was at the heart of a lot of those. Magnificent, yeah, absolutely superb. He must have come off the pitch thinking, how have I not scored? He's done everything in the game except score a goal. Such a threat. I think he's been looking really sharp. I thought he was in Prague on the Thursday before this game. Here we go. He makes something from nothing. Look where he touches the ball. He's midway in our own defensive half. Nowhere near the halfway line. He wins the ball there. Gets past a couple of City challenges. Bernardo Silva was diving in at one stage there. Lovely little one-two with Nunes. Look at the position. He's run a long way at big speed and you're thinking, now just, just stay calm. Can you get your touch right? He's onside, he's got space to take his touch and then finish. And the touch just gets away from him there and the goalkeeper can smother it. But brilliant from Diaz, he makes it himself. Little one-two, there we go, there's the onside. Miles onside, into the space. Well done Darwin Nunez there, by the way. Just the touch letting him down, that was a big chance, wasn't it? Next chance for, for Diaz as well. Mo Salah's now on the pitch, brilliant. Onside again, ball from Salah, Diaz is in 1v1, onside, you're thinking put it in, just put it in the back of the net there, there's the goalkeeper off his line, can you roll it past him? Big moment of the game, it really was, and he can't hit the target there, that felt like a huge, huge chance for Luis Diaz, sort of leaning back, you can see what he's trying to do, open his body out and trying to bend it high into that far corner, just got it wrong and that was a big moment. Another chance, this was I think a minute or so after that huge chance. Nunes is involved again, plays the ball slightly behind Luis Diaz and Luis Diaz is thinking maybe I need to take that touch. I think if he goes first time he gives himself a better chance to get a goal scoring attempt. Good defending, I think you have to say that for Kyle Walker, recovers really well because he's caught out in this position. Again he's onside, you can see. Nunes finds Diaz in that position, he's onside, hit, hit it first time, better chance to score and the moment it had gone. But, but he makes things happen. He yeah. really was sharp out there. Yeah, they were some of his best chances. Let's dig a little bit deeper and look at his, his overall game now, if you like, because he really did put in some shift. You've picked out some of his best bits. Yeah, absolutely. He, he was involved. Mentioned about him. He looks like he's enjoying himself. Back to, back to the levels we know that Luis Diaz is, is certainly capable of and, and influencing big games like this one. Here out on the left-hand side, up against Walker, probably the quickest fullback in the Premier League. Just caught Nunes a little bit unawares but he creates that chance again is an option out on this left hand side ball out to him this was first half wasn't it when you're thinking you've seen him score from here before fraction past the post look at this this was great he turns defense into attack and what he does is he gets Liverpool up the pitch 20 30 yards does it really well Luis Diaz this was a good moment brilliant passing from from Mo Salah Kyle Walker, who had a tough afternoon against him, that for me is a goal-saving block. That was a really piece of top defending from Kyle Walker to stop Luis Diaz. Here again, he makes a bad ball into a good ball. Defender should favour it. He wins that. This is one of my favourite bits. Look at the clock. 80 minutes gone. He makes the run from his own edge of the box. He goes past a couple of City players, one of them being Rodri. He's still going. Look at this. He's now going towards the edge of the penalty area there. You're thinking, can he make something happen? He wins a corner and he started all that run from the edge of his own box. By the way, Rodri's looky, looky here, look at this. He's on a yellow card, Rodri. He's desperate to bring him down. There is contact. If Diaz goes down there, it may well be a second yellow card. He's very honest, stays on his feet there, Luis Diaz and in the end wins a corner. That was a huge round of applause, it really was, around Anfield. Yeah, it was some effort, that wasn't it? Let's just show you his numbers, which underline really just what we are saying. He's, he's first in almost all of these at nearly 12K covered, although remarkably that does not even put him in the top three of distance cover, which shows the effort put in by the, the whole team, I think. Yeah, yeah, fourth. I mean, I mean, you expect your midfield players to be covering a lot of distance, but nearly 12K from, from Luis Diaz, you can see, 11.98 sprints. The furthest, and that's where he really caused City a lot of problems. Plenty of touches in the opposition penalty area, eight really, really good, good areas of the pitch. Chances created three. Uh, yeah, dribble something as well. One of his strengths, isn't it, Luis Diaz? Okay, Luis Diaz creating a lot, but there were other openings as well. You've got some of the, the best of the rest here. I think. Yeah, yeah, and, and do you know what was pleasing? The fact that we created so many good opportunities against this City team who have obviously been at the top for a, a number of seasons now. 
Not too many first half, wasn't too many opportunities first half to show you. This is probably the best of it. Brilliant from Harvey Elliott. Harvey Elliott was magnificent in the game. He finds a little bit of space, he dinks the ball to the far post. That's a good run from, from Soboslai, you have to say that from midfield. That's a good chance, just outside the six yard box. It's a free header, completely unmarked. He just doesn't time it right, does he? You can see he's up in the air there, maybe just the top of his head rather than his forehead to give himself a better chance to hit the target, wasn't far away. So that was first half, a lot more second half, there really was. We've shown you the Luis Diaz ones. Here we go, second half. We'd made the substitutions at this point. Andy Robertson was on, brilliant ball in, into that area. Darwin Nunes thinks he's gonna score, 70th minute or so on the clock. That's a good save from the substitute goalkeeper or take. It just sort of spreads himself. This angle shows you how good a save it is. There you go, 70 minutes on the clock. Ball in from, from Andy Robertson, brilliant ball in. He does everything right, doesn't he, Darwin Nunes? He's just unlucky to be denied by a really good save from the City goalkeeper. So that was a couple more opportunities which we nearly scored from. Yeah, fair few opportunities there. And just to dig a bit deeper on that, we mentioned at the top of the show that the 19 shots that Liverpool had, well, that is, you can see here, the most that a Jurgen Klopp side has had against a Pep Guardiola team. It's actually the fourth most City have faced in the last seven seasons, which illustrates who are under the cosh a little you know bit. What? It's difficult. It is difficult to create chances and have shots against this City side because Guardiola has them so well organised. and. They got beat to Villa, top of the list there. They got beat to Wolves, second in the list. They drew one all with Brighton and they drew one all with us. So very nearly, if we could have got that second goal, mm. it would have been enough. Yeah, what well, could have been eight. And we came into the game, obviously all the talk was this was, you know, the, the best Manchester City midfield. Could Liverpool's midfield match it? Well, I think after the performances of Alexis McAllister and, and Endo, that answers that question, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. And Harvey Elliott as well. The three of them were magnificent when he dropped in there, when Soboslai went off. Little things like this, breaking the lines. He, he sees the picture, he executes it really good from McAllister there, beating the Man City press. Second balls, so important. Who's quickest to react? There you go, Alexis McAllister picking the ball up by the halfway line and then it allows us to go and attack. Here again, reads the game really well. Skips away from the Rodri challenge. Lovely ball. What a ball that is out to the left-hand side for Luis Diaz. Always wanting the ball. He's always an option, isn't he, Alexis McAllister? And we showed you last week against Nottingham Forest. He'll have his head up and he'll lock eyes with, with Nunes and he'll say, I'll pick you out. You make that run. Look how close this was. Sees the run from Darwin Nunes, very nearly gets in there. That's top goalkeeping. And then he nearly gets himself a goal as well. You can see here, he's in good areas of the pitch, just outside the penalty area. I think the goalkeeper makes it look better than maybe it was that <laughs> one. But this is where he's unlucky. Again, he's getting into the box. Rodri's all over him. He's asking the question, was it a penalty? Probably not. But he's in that position, isn't he, to very nearly get a goal. He was absolutely superb. He was indeed. And you've done a little bit of number crunching on Alexis McAllister. And look at the firsts on that list. They are pretty impressive numbers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's playing higher up, Endo a little bit deeper. So we're going to see him maybe create a little bit more and, and have shots. Four shots in the game. Second for distance covered. There you go. 12.15 from him. Loads of touches on the ball. Possession one, 11. That's a player who reads the game really well, wins the ball back and then has the ability to, to play the ball to our attacking players to, to make things happen. Yeah, you mentioned Endo there. Let's take a look at Endo, shall we? Because he's, he's edging on cult hero status, I think, Endo at the moment. And I think this performance certainly hasn't done that any harm at all. Magnificent. He, he really was. I actually met a couple of supporters from, from Japan at the weekend and they were saying how excited they were to watch Endo. They'd flown all the way over and he was brilliant. In the biggest game of the season, Endo was magnificent. You know, when he arrived, people maybe didn't know a great deal about him, but these are the big tests up against De Bruyne. Give De Bruyne space, he'll hurt you. Time and time again, Endo was nice and tight, nice and sharp, reading that situation, stopping City counter-attacking, and the tackles he won in, in, in areas which were so important to stop City in a position to try and hurt us. Absolutely superb. Here again, go on then, make that tackle, win the tackle, and then we go on, on the front foot. Really good. Look at City, wanting to play out from, from the Liverpool press. He reads it well. This is on De Bruyne, too strong for De Bruyne. He stops him in a position to get on the ball. Endo was great, he really was. Yeah, and if you're wondering who topped the distance covered chart, it was indeed Endo. Let's show you his heat map. 12.16k covered, just piffing Alexis McAllister, the Japan skipper. Everywhere, there we go. He made four tackles, he won six duels and had 95% 
passing accuracy. He really was influential in the game. But his heat map was predominantly around about that centre circle, but left central a little bit to the right just to stop City and mainly De Bruyne getting on the ball to influence things. Yeah, let's speak about another big influence in the game. Isn't he always at the back, the captain? Yet another dominant match for him. It can't be any doubt, I don't think, about his status as the, the best defender in the Premier League right now, Moss. Well, unbelievable. He, he really was. I mean, look at the clips we're going to show you here. It's about challenging and sensing danger. Where's danger? Look how he sees where it is. The ball to the back post. If he's asleep, that's a goal-scoring chance for Haaland. He switched on and then manages to clear the ball behind as well. Absolutely top defending. Here again, don't often see him sliding, but he had to on that occasion. Otherwise, De Bruyne would be breaking down that right-hand side. We know about the form that Phil Foden's been in. Great form. Now, when Foden plays the ball into Haaland here, look at the distance between Haaland and Van Dijk. Two touches, all of a sudden Van Dijk's back helping his mate Kwanzaa, brilliant. And this was a moment a lot of people will remember. One of the best strikers in world football, best centre-halves in world football, 1v1. What have you got, Haaland? That is what Van Dijk would have been saying. Come on then, let, let's see what you can do. Brilliant defending, it really was. Watch this, here we go, 1v1, he's trying to twist him. He'll turn left, he'll turn right. And in the end, he forces Haaland to shoot from the edge of the box. This is what another angle to show you from. So he's twisting, he's trying to get, unbalance Van Dijk there. And he just sort of eases him off. So in the end, Haaland's thinking, well, I can't beat him for pace. So I'm going to have to take the shot on from the edge of the box. Uh, and between now and the end of the season, Van Dijk will, I'm sure, score another goal from a set piece. He is a threat. Last clip to show you. 93rd minute, City trying to break away on a counter-attack. Virgil van Dijk, nice and strong, sliding in to make that challenge. Imperious as ever, the Liverpool captain. Now, alongside him, of course, Jarrell Kwanzaa, who's he's already proved himself, but this probably one of the toughest tests you would have to say that he's faced so far. And once again, he showed he belongs on this stage. Abs Mal. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it might have been a surprise name on the team sheet because you could have put Gomez centre-back. You could have changed things around it in that sense. The manager thought, no, no, no. Jarrell Kwanzaa has been magnificent this season. I trust him to play in the biggest game of the season. Done well at Arsenal, we have to say that as well. But his distribution, he's very calm on the ball. I've sat next to Mark Wright, ex-Liverpool centre-half, England centre-half. He's really impressed with how calm he is on the ball. There, When he's got the ball, you can see, happy to play the ball out. Look at this. Sees the danger, blocks it. And he's switched on then to deal with that second one with Phil Foden. Really, really good defending from Kwanzaa. Time and time again, it was evident. Here again, I think in the Premier League, a lot of centre-halves, and you'll see it all the time, they switch off. Little give and go from attacking players. If he switches off here, Haaland's in a position, or, sorry, De Bruyne is in a position, and a goal-scoring chance may come from it. He's tuned in, sees it, and deals with it. Brilliant. That is brilliant defending from Jarrell Kwanzaa. Little battle with, with Haaland. Look at the frustration from Haaland. He's moaning at the ref. It's a foul, it's a foul. Because he's not getting any joy in that physical battle with Kwanzaa. Really, really good. And this reminded me of Joel Matip. Here we go, watch this one. <laughs> little, little run from the back, go on then. And pulls uh, a good save in the end from the goalkeeper to deny him getting himself a goal. There you go, one more angle to show you. Strikes it hard and now, I mean, the goal is a bit lucky because he pounds yeah. it out, could have gone to somebody else. Oh, we missed the Joel Matip run, so we? We've got Jarrell Kwanzaa's touch map here, actually, simply because he had, he had more touches than any other Liverpool player. And Mel's has counted each and every single one of those, haven't right. you? here we go. <laughs> Be bear with me. It's definitely 98 touches, so all them little red spots, you're not going to get time to count them. I've done it for you. 98 <laughs> touches, 90 passes, and he won possession back at... 11 times, so that was really good. It was a proper mature performance. The one which is highest up, which you probably won't see too often, was that shot which we showed you later on. But he was right centre. Van Dijk left centre of the, of the back two. And, and he had to do a good job because obviously the way we play with our right fullback getting forward, he covered really well on that right-hand side. 